Today in this video we will learn quite a lot. The first thing we will do is we will implement the user authentication with Angular, Firebase and Google provider and then we will have a look on the authentication guard which provided by Angular Fire Library. We will see um, the more use cases for this, we will learn how to customize it and we will implement our custom logic and right after this we will do something interesting. We will dive right into the source code of this authentication card and we will see how it was implemented and we will discover really something interesting. My name is Dmitry Mzhensky, subscribe to my channel right now and we are getting started. So here is the application which I created in the previous video. It's uh, just a simple to-do list with the, some basic authentication capabilities which I implemented with Firebase and backend was implemented with um, Hasura GraphQL engine. So if you didn't see the videos you can see it a little bit later but for exactly this video it doesn't really matter. So. The first thing, as I promised, I want to do is to implement the Firebase authentication with Google Provider. I just want to create next to my create user method, I want to create some like something like create account with Google. And uh, but the first thing we have to implement is we have to go to the Firebase console and we should navigate to sign in method and find this Google provider and just activate it. It says that it is automatically configured for iOS and web apps. We have web apps, so we just have to enable this and provide some support email and we have to save it. After this, we will see that uh, it is marked as enabled. And now what I want to do is to create some button just below to this create a user button. And uh, for this, I will go to just uh, register component template and add some button. I will just give a name, something like login with Google and rename the method to create user via Google. And I should create such a method in my TS file. And be but before I start to implement the logic, I have to implement some unnecessary modules and that will be module which comes from Firebase app and it's called Alf. And I copy this and now I can start to implement the logic. So I will start a stream using this from, uh, from operator from RxJS and I'm using this auth, pro, uh, auth service and in auth service there is the sign in with pop-up method and this method accepts the provider. So in our case it will be Google Auth provider. And then inside the pipe I have to do pretty much everything what I'm doing uh, in previous methods. So I will just copy paste it. The one thing I have to do is to destructure the display name and map it to the full name. We don't need these uh, values from the form anymore because all these values will be provided by Google Auth provider. So everything, name, email and so on. Uh, it looks good. Now we can save it and go to the browser and check if it's working. Click login with Google and we see that there is some error. It cannot find the provider and I know what the issue. Actually, I always forget to import this Firebase auth. That's what we have to do to make it work. And I just quickly check if everything works uh, fine. And uh -huh, we forgot to subscribe, so it would not work. We have to add subscribe and once we receive some something from the stream, which happens in case if we successfully logged in, right? And 
if we successfully logged in, we want to be navigated to the, our dashboard. So yeah, just remember that for to execute the stream, you have to always subscribe to it. Now let's go back to the browser. And now if I click, there is new tab has been opened. And now we see this um, Google interface, which asks us to choose account, which should be logged in. I will choose my Mitomzhensky account, provide the password. And now we redirected, we logged in and we redirected to our application. I can even check if everything is working. I can submit, yeah, our task appears in Hasura console. I refresh the page and I also see that my user was created. Also full name was added, which is great. And in Firebase console, I also reload and I see my user and it's labeled with the Google logo, which means that we created this user or authenticated this user via Google provider. And now I want to create pretty much the same, but for a login page. And uh, to do this, we have to go to our login form template and I will do quite similar thing what I did for registration component. I will just add some additional button and I will create required method in TS file. And here I have to also copy these two imports from previous component. And now I can do my authentication logic. So I will find this uh, sign in with pop-up and I have to provide the Google provider and this is pretty much it just in the then I have to redirect user to the dashboard and yeah just for this example I'm not handling the errors but you definitely in the your production application you have to uh, use catch operator to catch any errors and somehow properly handle it and I'm not creating the streams because for this exact case, it would be too much. Okay, let's check this out. I click login with Google and something happening and, and great. We were redirected to our dashboard, which is great. I think that's it with uh, authentication. Uh, the next thing I want to show you one case. So if we navigate to login page and we are logged in already, we still see this page, but I would like to have slightly different behavior. I want to redirect the user from login page to dashboard if user is logged in already. So let's implement this. The first thing I have to do is to go to the Angular um, Firebase library GitHub and to find documentation about these uh, router guards. And here we go. Yeah, there is the, our predefined some guards, some logic for guard, and I'm looking for log, something like redirect login into, yeah, that's what I need. So I copy this pipe, because it, it is actually pipe, and then we go to our routing module, and I will apply it against this login route. So somewhere here I will import this. And then we have to do the next thing. We have to provide this out guard in connectivate uh, property and inside the data, like we did for register, I have to do the same in the login router and provide our redirect login into um, 
into our root road uh, and you can keep it as a as it is with the function but let's follow the our code style and assign this to some separate constant i will just rename it to the redirect to dashboard and replace this with my new pipe and here i will just pass this redirect to dashboard pipe and then if we try to na navigate to login we see that we were redirected back to the dashboard which is behavior what we expected what else interesting here it can activate helper so it allows us to make our code shorter a little bit right so what we need we just have to copy this can activate method just import this and we have to provide our pipe and i can just remove the rest and yeah it's actually it looks way more cleaner so i will do the same thing for my second route for my registration route and i will remove unused imports and let's go back to the browser and try to check if everything working if we didn't break things navigation to login redirects us back to the dashboard which is exactly what should be and then i would like to show you how you want how you could customize your logic so let's imagine that we want to i don't know maybe do some console log some logging during the certain operation or whatever yeah and i want to create the pipe which before redirection it will be it will print some message in console log so to do this i have to import the pipe from rxjs and create just a regular custom pipe and there i will just use the tab operator which actually does nothing it doesn't modify the data it's uh, this pipe is being used just for side effects like what we have right now some console log or whatever and after my console log i will provide this redirect to dashboard and it complains because uh, that should be the function or what you don't like again uh -huh. ah okay i understand so the issue is that we have to either uh, call this redirect to dashboard function or we have we can provide this like, like it is or actually we can directly assign and pass it as a constant so this is how you can fix it it didn't like that it's just a uh, arrow function and it expects the um, the pipe itself there so that should work and let's check i will navigate to login and we see that our message is there it will be redirected message appears in our console and with this yeah, you can actually extend this uh, pipe further that's actually you can use i don't know some switch map there and do some additional logic whatever that's just regular rxjs pipe do what you want and now the time to dive into the source code so let's investigate how this als guard was actually implemented i i think we will find something interesting here and yeah now we see that there is our our angular fire our auth guard then we can see that is injectable so so technically it's a service and 
And this service, this is actually what we were provided before in our roles in this can activate uh, property. And you see this can activate method, which is we which we are using here. We see that this is just an object, so we're using spread operator to apply this to our road. And inside we see that this is can activate, which accepts this our uh, Angular file out guard actually, and uh, provides data and the value of this data is pipe, which we provide in our um, roles. So like this redirect to dashboard. And what else? What else? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, there is our predefined pipes, uh, authentication pipes, which we used. So redirect, uh, redirect un unauthenticated to that we used in previous videos. And also there is the redirected redirect logged in to which we used in today's video. What else? So that's some another which might be useful for exactly your use case. And uh, as you can see, they're all pipes. So that's the similar what we how we implemented our custom pipe. And also you can see this uh, use case with the switch map. So they probably go to some Firebase server or something like this to get this token. I don't know actually 100% where it goes, but it looks like this. there is some request to the server. Yeah, now let's have a look maybe on the Angular Fire guard itself. So we can see that implements the can activate method, which is um, actually requirements by Angular itself. So it like if you want to create your own guard, you have to create the service which implements the can activate and has the method can activate. That's all requirements for authentication guards. Nothing special. It's just service which has one specific method. And then uh, this method accepts actually the road snapshot and uh, rotor state and then what they're doing, they have, they create this pipe factory, which actually our pipe, what we providing, you can see that from the next, which is rotor snapshot, they accessing the data and inside the data, they accessing this out guard pipe, which is, which is, what we providing, what we provided before. You see this data out guard pipe and our pipe. So that's exactly what they fetching in this out pipe factory. And then they return this out state and take the only one emission. And this out state is actually our user. So yeah, that looks like they fetching the user. It can be user if it if we logged in or now if we are not logged in. And then they apply this out pipe factory and pass this um, ro uh, rotor snapshot and uh, rotor state to this uh, pipe factory, which is, we remember our custom pipe. And after this, uh, it checks if it's boolean type so if it's type of boolean then it returns the boolean which is true false or it returns the rotor create url tree so it's actually a redirection we will see it in details a little bit later but let's get back to this house pipe factory we see that we pass this uh, road snapshot and rotor state to this pipe. So in theory, our pipe should accept these two parameters as well. So we should have the access to uh, these values in our pipes when we create the pipe. And let's uh, copy this with the types to have the autocomplete from our VS code. So I will import 
everything what we need. And there in console in four, I will just uh, console log these parameters and from the state I will fetch URL just just to see if it's there, yeah, nothing special. And we could actually fetch something from the router snapshot. You can see that quite a lot of things we can access, but let's check so far if these values are there. Let's, let's, our, let's prove our theory first, okay? So I will navigate to login and we see that it's true. Our activated route is there and we see our URL as well. And um, yeah, everything is there. So let's play around a little bit maybe with our query params. And I want to access, as example, query param like, uh, let's call it test. Now if I navigate to login and let's imagine I have some query param text, uh, text sorry, test which is, uh, I know, my query. And we see that my query param was fetched and our URL as well there. And yeah, that's how you can access the router snapshot. And if you, if you need it, just use it. Now you know how to do this. So let's go back to our source code again and I want to highlight also the next thing like create URL tree and this create URL tree it's not about uh, just redirection to some I don't know URL which we provided as a, as array of the strings it is something a little bit more powerful and uh, let me show you just let's find the documentation of this URL tree method and let's find it here should be somewhere ah here we go there is usage notes and you can see that it's not only about the role or URLs or something you can I know customize it you have you can provide segment path or you can define in which outlet you want to render it or you can also what else you can define relative to which road you want to navigate sometimes it's uh, useful things where you want to have control over it and the most interesting I think things it's like defining outlet so you can render it in some another outlet it's not necessarily your main outlet like we have as example in current application so if we go to app component here yeah, you see this our main router outlet but it's not necessary that it's only one outlet you can create your additional one and give us some name some like I don't know, name maybe model, you want to render some dialogue window there, or I don't know what use case can be in your application, but you can have multiple roles and you can have the control over it. So that's just keep in mind that this is not just only about some, I don't know, stupid redirection. It is way more interesting that's i would say it that's all our findings which we exposed in the source code and i think uh, it was quite interesting all right so that was it how did you like it let me know in the comment section if it was useful for you if i should do more videos such a detailed with the diving into the source code and so on yeah, I am really appreciate for your feedback and yeah, if you like what I'm doing, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and yeah, thank you for your attention and see you in the future.